Have you ever been listening to a record and asked yourself in frustration, why does my groove not feel nearly as good as that drummer's groove? Trust me, we've all been there. Your groove isn't smooth and polished and danceable enough. And so in the end, you kind of doubt whether or not you're really good enough to play with a band. And I get it because honestly, this is a must have skill for a gigging drummer. This is a super important thing. So how do we gain it? Well, guess what? We can clean up our groove and make the audience dance by utilizing one thing, one skill. I'll break this down for you today. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I'm here to help you become the drummer other people want to jam with and have in their band. And we do this by teaching you the non-glamorous core drumming skills to get you results faster. And speaking of which, I've got a totally free gift for you in the description below. This is a free mini course you can go jump into right now that is gonna help you eliminate your weekend. It's called Three Steps to Eliminating Your Weekend. It's gonna help you achieve freedom on the drums, which is tremendous. If you've had any issue going on with just not being able to play evenly, you've got that galloping sound with your singles, fills aren't smooth, navigation around the kit isn't smooth, you feel like there's just a mental roadblock to playing what you wanna play, Fix your weekend, and it's gonna eliminate all of that. It's gonna be extremely helpful to you. And so in three steps, we break that down in these lessons in the mini course. Totally free, my gift to you. Go check it out, go sign up for that. It's gonna help you out a bunch. And it's actually gonna help you out a lot with making your groove feel better and feel more consistent and smooth and danceable. And so that's just a additional aid, additional training to help you out with what we're doing today. So I'll see you there in the course. Let's dive into today's lesson. So here's the problem, your groove doesn't feel good, it's not professional and polished and smooth and maybe things are a little bit shaky or amateur feeling. Uh, I, I've been there, trust me. I remember getting to a point in my playing, this was probably when I was in college, where I could play a lot of cool stuff. I could, I had, my coordination was pretty good, my hand technique was pretty good. I could play a lot of complex and even flashy fast things, but none of it felt good. And that was what I started to realize. I started to gain the musical maturity to realize, you know, I'm playing all these things, but if I play something really simple, if I strip it all down of all the, the fluff and play something really simple, it just doesn't feel that good. There's not really that pocket to it. It doesn't feel danceable. It doesn't feel as good as, you know, Steve Jordan's groove that I'm listening to on John Mayer Live in LA. It's a great record, by the way. We're gonna talk a little bit more about. And so why is my groove not feeling as good as the groove of these, you know, these professionals out there, the, our drumming heroes? What's going on here? And that was something I had to figure out. And so that whole thing was a huge struggle for me. And it took me a long time to, to really figure out how can I make my groove feel better? And the interesting thing was I, I learned that it's really just one element. There's really just this one key skill that if you apply that one key skill to everything that you do, everything that you play on the drums will feel better. It's actually very simple. So here's the deal. We humans like routine and predictability. I mean, if, if you think about your life and your, your daily schedule, you probably have some sort of a morning routine, whether it's intentional or not, but you probably do the same thing every morning. There's a certain time of day where you do the same thing over and over again. We like routine and predictability because it helps us relax. It helps us not have to make so many decisions and it just makes life easier. So what if we could do that with our groove? What if we could create routine and predictability that helps the audience relax in the way that we play? Because actually that's the first step to making the audience dance. They have to feel good about what you're playing. They have to feel relaxed into what you're playing. If what you're playing is shaky and doesn't feel right, they're not gonna be able to dance to it because they don't, they don't really trust that groove. It's like, you know, there's a kind of a trust element. They've gotta trust what you're playing because it's gotta be smooth, it's gotta be predictable and confident, and then they can relax into it, settle into it, and then it becomes danceable. So here's the deal, you can make your audience dance by utilizing one thing, that one thing is dynamic consistency. What we're gonna do today is create steady dynamics by mastering singles. Super fundamental, and we're gonna talk about how to apply this, how this all works, going through just a few steps here. So. Hope you're ready, get your sticks, uh, get your practice pad. Of course, we're gonna place them on the full kit as well, but you can start off on a pad. And if a pad is all you've got right now, no worries, you can make a lot of progress just with that. But grab your sticks. Step one, pull out your metronome, set it to 70 beats a minute. Doesn't matter which metronome app you're using. I'm a huge fan of Tempo Advance. It's a really great app. Um, cost a couple dollars. There's some really good paid ones. There's some good free ones too. Set your metronome to 70, have it play eighth notes. One and two and three and four and hopefully you can hear mine okay. 
And then step two, just play eighth notes on your pad, one hand at a time. We'll start off with left hand. One and two and three and four. Spend some time doing that with left hand and switch to right hand. And now what I want you doing is asking yourself, are my hands relaxed? Is my grip loose? Um, that's super important. Really, that's our step three. As you're doing this, that's the first thing I want you asking yourself, because um, that's even more important than am I playing in time? Like, yeah, that's a fundamental thing. We wanna be playing in time to our metronome since we've got it going. But even more fundamental and more important than that right now is are we gripping loosely? Because the magical thing is that if you're gripping loosely and you're nice and relaxed, the time is gonna happen. The dynamic consistency is gonna happen. So make sure you're gripping loosely. If you are a total beginner or you feel like you've got some, some weird stuff going on with your grip and you're like, yeah, this is wonky, I need to, I need to figure this out, uh, go check out another lesson here. You can pause this video, click it in the description, open it up in another tab. Another lesson here called the best skill to practice when you can't make noise. And we talk about the nuance of fulcrum and stick motion because if you get that going, that's gonna help you out a whole bunch. So for all the detail on that, go check out that lesson. But for right now, in a nutshell, what you wanna make sure you're doing is you've got a hinge point. As long as there's a hinge point in your hand, the stick can swing back and forth. And just like a door, I've got a door over here, that door is on hinges. And so guess what? Because the door is on hinges, if I open it and I push it open, I know exactly the path it's gonna travel each day. It's not gonna hit my dehumidifier, it's not gonna hit my basket of sticks over here because it always opens the same place each time because it's on hinges. Take the hinges off and push the door and who knows what it's gonna fall on. It's gonna knock this mic over, it's gonna hit this drum, it's gonna be a disaster. The same thing is true with your sticks where if you lose that hinge point, if you lose the fulcrum point, who knows where the stick's gonna go and you don't know what's gonna happen. How are you gonna have routine and predictability in your playing and consistent time and dynamics if there's not a hinge point. So that hinge point is critical. Dive into that other lesson for all the nitty gritty specifics on that. But what I want you to do is form a hinge point on your middle finger, maybe like halfway up the finger. Doesn't matter exactly where, point is there is a hinge that allows you to do this right here. Because as soon as you establish this, you can have the same repetitive motion that just happens reliably over and over and over again and you really don't have to think about it. And that's the beauty of this. So once you've evaluated that with both hands and you're like, okay, I've got the motion going on here. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe I don't feel completely comfortable or confident yet. That's okay, because that's gonna come with time. Sit here and just repetition. Sit here and practice your eighth notes. Metronome's going at 70. Practice loudly, you know, not crazy loud, but nice and strong. And then get softer. Switch hands, get louder. There's not a right or wrong way to do this, but it's always great to practice a variety of dynamics. And so here's, here's what's so key here. This is so easy to overlook, and we tend to overlook simple things like this. This is so simple. Super simple thing to be practicing on your pad, but if you get your grip loose, relaxed, and you're reminding yourself as you're playing, okay, stay relaxed, keep the, you know, don't tense up your shoulders. It's easy to go like this sometimes. It's easy to try too hard. And what I want you doing here is not trying super hard to play in time and not trying super hard to play with the same volume each time. Instead, I want you focusing on relaxing because if you can relax your shoulders, like literally put an arm up here and make sure these, these neck muscles, shoulder muscles aren't super tense. Make sure you're relaxing, make sure your grip is relaxed and you've got that fulcrum point. And that way physically things are fluid because if that's the case, you're not gonna need to think a ton about time and dynamic consistency. Those things are gonna fall into place naturally. And so you're gonna, you're gonna get the results you want way more quickly that way. Because if you're stiff and tight, you're gonna have to work so hard to try to play in time and play with even dynamics that you're gonna be that caveman drummer that can maybe play a couple of things and none of the things that you can play sound good. And so you've gotta be relaxed. That's where fluidity comes from. Fluidity and smoothness come from being relaxed. And guess where speed comes from? Speed, speed comes from fluidity and smoothness. So if you're relaxed, things become smooth. Things become polished and consistent and even sounding. And if things are polished and consistent and fluid and even sounding, then it's a lot easier to go fast. And so if you're trying to play fast, if that's a big goal that you have, 
which is a valid goal. That shouldn't be our number one focus as drummers, but sure, we wanna be able to play fast. That's naturally gonna stem from this. You're gonna naturally be able to play a lot faster when you're focusing on these things. So something you can do now, we've been doing our singles here, move them to different places on the kit. Practice them on a pad. You could even practice singles on your leg because the whole thing here is motion and having consistent motion even when there's varying amounts of rebound. And so practice having a little bit of a firmer fulcrum so that you can keep the stick moving like this. Something that's really important here, not to go off on a total tangent, but this is important. Be able to do this right here, just air playing. Because if you can do this, if you can have the stick moving, have the stick in steady motion just in the air without hitting anything, then that means you can create steady motion hitting anything, right? If you can have steady motion in the air, that means you can have steady motion on the edge of the hats, on the bell of the ride, on the floor tom. So the obvious next step is applying what we've learned here to grooves. So I'm gonna take the practice pad off here. I mentioned that uh, John Mayer Live in LA record. Steve Jordan has some tremendously awesome feeling grooves on that record. If you haven't listened to it, go check it out. Every drummer needs to listen to uh, John Mayer Live in LA, Where the Light Is, and listen to Steve Jordan's groove. J.J. Johnson also plays drums on that record. He plays in the full band portion of the, the concert, which is pretty cool. So go listen to all of that. Tremendous drumming, just incredible pocket and feel in so many songs. But Specifically, I want you to go listen to Vultures. Vultures is one of the John Mayer trio songs on that album. It's just Steve Jordan on drums, Pino Palladino on bass, John Mayer on electric and vocals. And the whole groove just has this great feel where it's just this. Just that super simple kind of pocket groove. Go give it a listen, a nice deep snare. This snare's not tuned deep, but it's a super cool deep snare sound going on. So I want you to play along with that, but maybe before you do that, just play some eighth notes and pay attention to their evenness. Are your eighth notes on the hats nice and even? We've been doing 70 beats a minute. We now wanna start upping the tempo, get up to 100, and see if we can play even eighth notes on the hats at 100 beats a minute, because that's the tempo of vultures. And so that's a, a, good, a good tempo bracket to be focusing in, 70 to 100, doing eighth notes and practicing, you know, just mid-air eighth notes, practice pad eights, leg eights, cymbal, hi-hat, floor tom, whatever. Just practice doing that. What does it take to, to keep it feeling good? Well, keep the shoulder relaxed, make sure you're nice and relaxed, your hand is loose, you're not hammering super tight, don't be louder than you need to, be nice and chill. Then for those backbeats, remember when we're playing backbeats, we're essentially just playing super, super slow singles. One. Have a, a gentle lift, a prep stroke. One, and, and four, and, and two, and three. And four, and. And then add the kick in. And what I want you doing is just play the money beat here, but be listening to the dynamics. Are the eighth notes consistent? Are each of my backbeats the same volume? Dynamic consistency, remember that's the one big thing and we're getting there by focusing on being relaxed as we play. But now we wanna start using our ears. We wanna really be listening to what we're doing. So our ears are checking. Our ears are checking and critiquing our playing and making sure that we're staying even. And because we're loose and relaxed, it's not that hard to do. And if you do that, even consistent eighth notes, unwavering, in time, steady dynamics, reliable backbeats, that right there is so critical. When your backbeat is always right there and the listener can count on that backbeat happening every time and those eighth notes are so steady, the groove just feels good. A groove that, does, so a version of that that doesn't feel good but sound kind of like this.
feel how just unsteady that felt. I, maybe that was somewhat in time, but the dynamics were all wacky. And so obviously that's an extreme example, but if the dynamics are all crazy, nothing feels good and you can't settle into that. But if the dynamics are consistent, you can relax into it, make sure the kick is nice and strong. When we're playing rock, kick should be the loudest thing. Focus on being strong on the kick, nice steady backbeats, and then don't go too heavy on the timekeeping. Let's say we moved over to the ride, just play lightly. Because that's another secret to, to smooth, fluid timekeeping that feels good. Don't hammer it out. You don't have to hit that hard. Just be nice and relaxed there with that right hand. Make sure you're hitting the drums and just floating along on cymbals. Light timekeeping, heavier drum hitting. You always want to go lighter on cymbals, heavier on drums. That'll help create a great feel. So, okay, I know we've gone through this quickly, but hopefully I've hammered into your head. Dynamic consistency is the key. And when dynamics are consistent, time gets more consistent. When, when time is consistent, it's easier to have dynamics consistent. And all of this is easier when you're relaxed. And so that's what we're focusing on. But hey, let's dig into some fun bonus stuff. Because once you've done that, once you've got a great feeling pocket money beat, you're ready for, for some bonus things to really help get people dancing. So a couple of things we want to talk about here. Really two things, two really cool ways to get your audience dancing and of course this depends on the song and the tempo you're at but these are just some go-to's and some things i've found that will always just make a groove funky when you can make something funky it just takes on that really cool feel that makes people want to move so the first thing is add and emphasis to your groove what do i mean by that so let's say we have a kick snare pattern of money beat there's nothing on the ands that's just one two three Four, but let's say we add in a hi-hat on the ands. One, and two, and two, and four, and. Suddenly it's a little bit more interesting, especially when you get to kind of that 90 to 100 tempo range, and especially if there's more syncopation in the part like this. That can get really interesting when you've got a little bit of a syncopated kick drum part and there's this and emphasis on the hi-hats. Another example would be something like this. If we take that out, it's still kind of a cool funky groove, but it's not as interesting if we take this out. Add it back in though. It just adds kind of this swing element to it because it creates a like a hybrid double time feel. When you're playing on the ands, it's like it makes the groove want to do this. It kind of just makes the listener want you to launch into double time, which also makes people dance. And so it just adds that level of energy and motion to a groove that's so cool. And I find that to be so helpful if you're doing like a tom groove. Having that and motion over here helps so much with just giving motion to a tom groove. That can be super cool. But hey, there's something else that you might have noticed me doing in a lot of these examples that really creates the kind of the danceability factor. It's not just the and emphasis, though that is key, and that's something that you know we heard in disco grooves a long time ago. The whole thing with disco was. And when you've got that, naturally that makes people want to dance. When you've got the steady quarter note pulse with the and emphasis, so disco is a super straight, simple example of that. But hey, something else that really helps with this is slightly swing your timekeeping. In other words, give it kind of a loose feel, especially when you're in that 90 to 100 beats per minute tempo range like we've been here in a lot of these examples. If we're you know, in this tempo range, somewhere around 90 to 100, if you can swing some 16th timekeeping, so instead of playing like this, that'd be pretty boring, especially if it's all even. If I play this, Number one, it just makes my arm hurt. It's like, that's not musical, it's not fun. If we go like this. Okay, that's cool, that gives us some dynamics. Now we've got some, uh, 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 uh. but what if we swing it?
But instead of full on swinging it like this, that would be full on swinging it. That's not a bad thing, but what if we go somewhere in between where it's not this, but it's not this? What if we do I think that's a super cool place to be, a super cool place to sit, especially when you combine that with the and emphasis. That just feels super cool. Think about superstition, Stevie Wonder superstition. It's more straight than it is swung, but it has that funkiness because there's like a slight swing to it where it's kind of like. Same thing with I Wish by Stevie Wonder where it's kind of that, that not entirely swung, not entirely straight. When you can do that kind of feel, And especially when you can do some syncopation with that, where you've got a boom, any kind of uh or two pattern, but anything that's 16th based and then swing those 16ths just slightly and keep that and emphasis, there's so much you can do with this. And so I know we, we've gone through a lot here in this lesson. We went through the super fundamentals of, hey, if you're a total beginner, here's what you gotta do to get your groove feeling good so you can make people dance. But now what we've just gotten into is kind of the, if you're an intermediate or advanced player or you're gigging a bunch, you're learning a lot of songs and you've got those fundamentals down, those are some really cool tactics you can dive into to really help you have fun and really create an awesome feel. Um, there's a song that uh, I play with my band, uh, my original band, one of our songs where we've got that kind of funky groove. It's like. And it's one of those that's just so much fun to play. We love it. It's one of our favorite songs to play. It's right around 90 beats a minute. And I think there's something about that sweet spot. 90 beats a minute with some swung-ish, loose feeling 16ths. It's a great place to be. Uh, Superstition, by the way, is right around 100. Vultures is 100. And so it's that, that kind of tempo range. So practice slightly swinging your 16ths and then doing ands with the left foot, any kind of and motion uh, in that tempo range, and you're gonna create some really funky grooves that are super danceable. So go and have fun with this, get creative with this. Just remember that this all comes after those initial fundamentals. Focus on the fundamentals if you need to. If there's any sloppiness going on, if there's anything that's not consistent and feeling great, start with the fundamentals, master those first. And hey, as we wrap up today, I got a question for you. What is your favorite feeling groove? In other words, what song do you think has the absolute best feeling groove of all time? So I mentioned uh, what one of mine was, Vultures by John Mayer with Steve Jordan on drums uh, from, from that record, Live in LA. Tell me what your favorite feeling, best feeling groove ever is. I think mine is actually, I don't trust myself with loving you, also off that same record, but it's the third part of that live concert uh, with John Mayer's full band. So J.J. Johnson's playing drums. Steve Jordan is on drums in the trio part doing vultures. J.J. Johnson's on the drums for, uh, for I Don't Trust Myself. That song is so funky. It's got the deep snare and he's just doing this groove the whole time. Just that kind of thing. It's kind of that loose kind of swung feel. It kicks off with this fill. It's one of those intoxicating grooves that just is so mesmerizing and so cool. I don't trust myself with loving you. That is my favorite. I think that is my favorite best feeling groove of all time. So tell me what yours is. If a song comes to mind, tell us in the comments. Let's talk about it and uh, have some fun nerding out on awesome feeling songs. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I know this one's been a little bit longer and just full of things, but I hope, hope all of this has been valuable to you. I hope I've given you a lot of cool stuff to practice. Be sure to go dive into that weekend mini course if there's any issue going on with that weekend. Because hey, ghost notes are another cool way to funkify a groove. And so those are hard to do if you've got a weekend. So go eliminate that weekend, my free gift to you. 
achieve freedom in your playing, go join the mini courses in the description. But hey, know that you can do this. You can master these things. You can accomplish these things in your playing and become the drummer you're made to be. I'll see you on the next lesson. Stay non-glamorous.